Okay, so initially I had found magnetizing out of my league. So I just picked what I liked the look of, and so when I assembled my Carnifex Brood, I went with Crushing Claws and Scything Talons, because they would be accompanying Old One-Eye, whose loadout is also a set of Crushing Claws and Scything Talons, but he has his blown open side of his head, which I painted with the Nihilic Oxide over White Scar, and I also decided to replace the Crushing Claws with those from a Harispex because he deserves to have Whopper pincers bigger than your regular Carnifex. But then I got into playing with Magnets, and it went really well with my Tyrant Guard and Hive Tyrant, so I decided to try it again, especially because Screamer Killers are now pretty good, at least for now, but mostly because with Octarius and Crusher Stampede, the new Codex, the points change, and the nerfs and the data slate, you never know what loadout is going to be good on a monthly basis at this point, it seems. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! So I grabbed a fresh Carnifex Brood. There's a few sprues with tons of options, so this should take a bit of work, but should be really fun and make them really functional. I scoped out what I had and then grabbed the wire cutters and started to extract all of the bits. Okay, this is quite the pile and mold lines are plentiful and distinct, so it takes a bit of work to get everything prepped. Trimming down with the X-Acto knife and then holding it at 90 degrees to the plastic surfaces so I can scrape away those lines. The torso is easy to assemble with a couple of pieces to snap together and then you add the other surfaces of the vents on the chitin. Then gluing the legs to the tail and adding the smooth plastic dome with a little nubbin so it can be made to securely attach to the torso. The heads come in two pieces that you glue and push together and I'm going to magnetize the standard one after adding a bladed horn to its brow and magnetize the ones with tusks and the one with the big tongue and uh, things that make it look like a Bolchinian. Okay, he's a Bolchinian. Oh. Which I assume mean these are the glands granting it the acid more keyword. But I'm not doing these heads. I mean, they're okay. I like the several sets of eyes, but with the horns, it just looks too rabbit from Donnie Darko. Okay, before I assemble the whole body, let's start drilling. I have the Magnet Soul Magnets combo pack for miniatures. There are 300 magnets in three sizes. And for the torso, I'm going with the big ones. By dropping them on the base of the drill bits, you can judge which bit will work and create the right size hole. First up, the carapaces. I'm going to magnetize these because they actually serve different war gear functions. There's the standard blank one. There's one covered in small spines, so I assume these get you your chitin thorns so you can dish out those mortal wounds on a charge. And there's another covered in small openings, so I assume these get you those oh so valuable spore cysts, so your big fellow has a better chance of getting across no man's land and not be cut to pieces by enemy ranged fire. By placing one of the carapace pieces in place, I ran a sharpie under the shell along the front of the torso so I can accurately gauge where the magnets will meet. Where the carapace rises up at the front above the Carnifex's head, the plastic is a bit more dense, and so on the inside a medium sized magnet can be glued into position. And for the other magnet, drilling a hole on the upright area of torso, right above the head socket, pretty much in the middle, works grand. A dab of super glue and in it goes. Oh, and an old toothbrush is useful to get the loose stuff out of the holes. Once the glue is dry, a drop of super glue in the torso hole, and then push the column of magnets against the established magnet on the carapace. If they connect, turn them around and push the column into the hole and wipe aside to leave a magnet in place and facing the right way round. If they are repulsed, the column is good to go and insert it in that direction. On to the heads. They too have that little nubbin that slots into the torso pit, and this is in the way of my magnets, so I just dropped an X-Acto to it and chopped it off. 
because the heads are small, I'm going to use the medium magnets. After selecting a proper size drill bit, I drilled a hole in the middle of the head dome and another in the middle of the torso socket. A drop of superglue into the torso and then add a magnet that you can push into place with the back of a brush. Then another drop in the head, push the column of magnets against the torso, it repels, so push into place and wipe aside, letting your thumbnail keep it in place, and this stops it jumping out and clapping back to the other magnets, or more frequently, flipping over in the hole. Okay, I glued the body to the legs and now it's moving onto the towels, because there are two other variants for the tips that I think I can magnetize. Using the smallest of the magnets, I chose a drill bit and drilled into the flat upper part of the tip of the towel, because it's the thickest bit. Then, drilling a hole and adding a small magnet to the similar end part of the thresher scythe and also to those big knobbly bone maces. Then, placing the drill to the torso sockets, I drilled through into the interior. A quick scrape with the toothbrush and then I added a large magnet. Now. By using a drill bit, I clapped them to the torso magnet and then propped it up so it can be held in place while it dries. This is because as you add the other magnets, they can be yanked inside and lost before the superglue dries and holds them firmly in place. The magnet is much more attracted to the drill than the other magnets and this stops that happening. Okay, with the big magnets in place, time to break out the medium ones. Drop in the X-Acto knife to the rounded ball of the limbs, and by chopping it off at an angle, you get a nice flat surface to drill a small pit into. The quad set of scything talons gets magnets, the death spitters all get a magnet, so I can have them chuck slime and maggots all about the place, as do the devourers, whose nasty brain leech worms can cause some real damage. And then, the crushing claws. For the Venom Cannon, I eyeballed the rough pose so that the feed tube meets the cannon. And once the magnets were dry and in place, I dropped the limbs to the torso and then glued the feed tube into position with Citadel glue. Now, because there has been a lot of groping, handling and fiddling, I think there might not only be lots of little bits of stray plastic, but also sweat and oils from my grubby mitts on everything. And this may stop the primer sticking as well as it should. So I dropped everything into a sieve, added a little squirt of washing up liquid, and gave everything a good rub, and then a good hose down to get rid of all that detergent. Once dry, on to priming. By using a metal ruler, I can attach all of the limbs and heads to the surfaces and balance them across my priming box. I also dropped the carapaces and towels and the carnifex itself underneath, and gave everything a proper and thorough coating. Now, Let's check it out. A tusk head, some spore cysts, and some scything talons. A plain carapace, venom cannon, and scything talons. Some chitin thorns carapace, an acid maw head, death spitters, crushing claws, and a thresher scything towel. Everything looks great. Okay, I grabbed one of my lock picks and then started scraping it across the surfaces of all the magnets to get the primer off them, and thereby improve their connectivity. The lockpick is the better choice than the Exacto because it's not sharp and won't do any damage. Now, while cleaning this up, I was reminded about getting a little overzealous with the drill, and I had accidentally bored through one of the limbs. To conceal the hole, some army painted green stuff, a tiny bit of yellow, a tiny bit of blue, and grind them together until they turn green, and then take a small blob and push it into place. And then I used one of my lockpicks to smooth it over, mold it, and restore the Carnifex's deltoid to its proper unspoiled appearance. Okay, on to my high fleet colours. The crag blue on all the skin, and... Oops, I forgot something. There are some iffy connections, especially on the torso. So breaking out the Mr. Dissolved putty, and with an older brush, dabbed some into all those joins and crevasses on the back, and where the vent pieces were clipped together. I actually ended up just loading up the brush and swabbing around inside the vents to get a nice smooth interior. Okay, back to the McCrack Blue, and after the body and legs and towel have all been covered, onto the armaments. And the magnet means I can paint the whole thing, and then with the metal ruler balanced between two glasses, I can give them a coat and clip them into position so they can dry. 
Then, Zerus purple on all the magnetized carapaces and on the main body chitin as well, and then onto the sections of chitin on the various weapons and armaments and on those tail pieces. Next up, white scar and a skinny brush to paint all of the gills on the legs and on the weapons and on the outside of the vents. And then, inserting the brush into the vent, I just twirled around and applied a solid layer in there. Also, in the Carnifex mouths, and on the extended tongues, and at the ends of the gum barrels. And once dry, time to drain another pot of Null Oil and apply it all over the main body. The carapaces, the weapons, the limbs, the only things I avoided were the mouths and the inside of the vents. Now, I had accidentally broken off the tip from an X-Acto knife, so it was great to be able to use this blunt tip to scrape off any paint and null oil that was on the surfaces of the magnets, letting me clean up all those surfaces. Once dry, the Nihilic Oxide Technical Paint applied to the areas of white scar, this thin paint settles in the recesses to grant a more distinct hue, with the higher points being less covered, and so I get my nice bioluminescent effect. Once it was dry, breaking out the Imric Blue Dry. Dipping my brush in, I started painting the ends of the crushing claws, the ends of the various ranged weapons, and the tips of the scything talons. And as I established a solid colour there, this shed just enough paint so that I could start dry brushing the rest of the stuff with the leftovers, applying it to the ribs, the jaws, the cheeks, the legs, arms, weapons, basically all over. And I also started establishing a more solid colour for the tail tip as well. Then, onto the Ethereum Blue Dry to do the exact same thing, just further towards the tips of the various ranged weapons, the talons, the claws, and then a lighter dry brush over the rest of the model. And then, a dry brush of Gene Stealer Purple on all the chitin which came out really nice on those detachable carapace pieces with all those distinct thorns and cysts. Now, this got some accidental dry brushing swipes on some gills that I actually wanted to be Nihilic Oxide, so I added a little more of the Oxide, which of course erased the Null Oil which was giving the trenches prominence. Okay, I watered down some Null Oil, one drop of the oil, two drops of water, stirred it up and applied it to the areas that had lost their accent, and this brought it right back again. A single dot of moot green on the eyes, and my hand must be getting steadier, because I didn't have to break out the Abaddon Black to clean up any misses. Then, onto finishing up with the base. I glued a few of the larger pieces of slate stone into place with superglue, and then squirted on some Elmers and wiped it around with a brush, so I could sprinkle on the smaller slate stone and let it dry. Once dry, I turned it upside down and gave it a few knocks with a pen to shed the loose stuff and we're ready to varnish. With everything on the metal ruler, a squirt of Army Painter Anti-Shine from about a foot away, and then the main model, a quick squirt from every direction, and a close-up squirt onto the slate. And finally, a quick accent. Grabbing a Croot skull, I used a cocktail stick to drop a blob of Weldwood contact cement into place, and after it dried a little, I used the stick to dip in and stretch out strands to the surrounding rocks and to the skull to create a big, nasty pile of torn up, dissolving flesh. I applied a layer of corn red once it was dry, and realized that the skull was kind of lost. So I added another one and glued it on top of all that sundered gore and painted it red. A quick wash of Null Oil and then a dry brush with some Army Painter Dragonfire Red. Okay, let's have some fun and see all the options now open to me. How about some spore cysts with a horned head and a full set of four scything talons? How about just some scything talons with death spitters? How about uh, just a standard carapace, but with acid maw, maybe a bone mace tail, some devourers, and some crushing claws? Nah, how about a chitin thorn carapace with tusks, and a thresher tail, and a venom cannon, and then the scything talons? So here is my new Carnifex brood. Here they are as a couple of screamer killers, fast, deadly, vomiting balls of searing bioplasma into the foe before bringing their lethal talons to bear. 
And here is the full force of my Carnifex monsters, led by the infamous and indomitable beast that is Old One Eye. <laughs>